Hi all, in this video we're going to discuss the paper on persistence in mutual fund performance by Carhartt. So what is the research question? Over the past several decades, the concept of mutual fund persistence has been well documented in the finance literature, but not well explained. According to Carhartt, Carhartt suggests that the persistence in mutual fund performance is unable to reflect superior stock picking skill. Instead, other common factors in stock returns and differences in expenses and transaction costs explain the predictability of mutual fund returns. Carhartt also aims to demonstrate that both expenses and turnover have a one-for-one -one negative impact on fund performance, and that the joint hypothesis problem of testing market efficiency clouded the evidence that the article has to support the existence of mutual fund managers' stock picking skills. Additionally, Carhartt demonstrates that common risk factors in stock returns and investment expenses nearly completely explain persistence in equity mutual funds mean and risk adjusted returns. As mentioned previously, and this is regarding what does the literature say, uh, mutual fund persistence was well documented in the finance literature, albeit not well explained. Articles such as Hendricks, Patel, and Zeckhauser, 1993, Goatsman and Ibbotson, 1994, Brown and Goatsman, 1995, and Wormers, 1986, found evidence of persistence in mutual fund performance over a short time horizon of one to three years. Furthermore, Grinblatt and Titman, 1992, and Elton Gruber, Doss, and Halovka, 1993, documented mutual fund return predictability over a longer horizon of five to 10 years. Carhartt, 1992, demonstrated that persistence in expense ratios drove much of the long term persistence in mutual fund performance. The author also analyzed Jagadish and Titman and their one-year momentum in stock returns, which accounted for Hendricks, Patel, and Zeckhauser's 1993's hot hands effect in mutual fund performance that infrequently repeated their abnormal performance. This was in contrast to Wormer's 1996, which suggested that momentum strategies generated short-term persistence. So why is this research question important? This study is important as it expanded the existing literature on the topic by controlling for survivor bias or survivorship bias, further explaining the results and impacts by documenting common factor and cost-based explanations for mutual fund persistence. What data is used? The mutual fund database covered diversified equity funds monthly from January 1962 to December 1983. The data are free of survivorship bias, and all of them include equity funds over the periods. The data were obtained through surviving funds from MicroPal slash investment company data, ICDI. For other non-surviving funds, data were collected from Fund Scope Magazine, United Babson Reports, Weisenberger Investment Comparisons, and the Wall Street Journal. Table 1 reports the summary statistics on the mutual fund data. The sample includes a total of 1,892 diversified equity funds in 16,108 fund years. The sample omitted sector international and balanced funds. The remaining funds were equally divided among aggressive and long-term growth and growth and income categories. The author compared his findings to the other literature and discovered that survivorship bias is an important issue in mutual fund research. The author's data set migrated or mitigated problems such as procedure biases as he obtained monthly total returns from multiple sources. This table reports the time series average of annual cross-section averages from 1962 to 1963. TNA is total net assets. Flow is the percentage change in total net assets suggested for investment return and mutual fund mergers. Expense, ex, EXP ratio is the total annual management and the administrative expenses, which are provided by the average total net assets. M turns modified turnover. Maximum is the total maximum front end, rear end, and deferred sales charges as percentage of the investment. In slide six, which is table two, we have VWRF is the Center for Research for Security Prices Valuated Stock Index minus the one-month T-bill return. RMRF is the excess return on Fama French's 1993 market proxy, SMB and HML. Our Fama and French's factor mimicking portfolios for size and book to market equity. PY1YR is a factor mimicking portfolios for one-year return momentum. The summary statistics in Table 2 indicated that the four-factor model can explain considerable variations in returns. The high variance in SMB, HML, and one-year momentum, zero investment portfolios and low correlations with each other, also suggests that the four-factor model and explained sizable time series variation. 
high means returns on the on the above also suggest that these three factors could account for cross-sectional variations in the mean return of stock portfolios. The author also discovered that the four-factor model substantially improved on the average pricing errors of the gap app. He also estimated the pricing error on 27 quantitatively managed portfolios of stock from Carhartt, Crail, Stevens, and Welch. 1986. The four-factor model eliminated almost all of the patterns of pricing errors, which indicated well describes the cross-sectional variation in average stock returns. Table three, the author formed portfolios of mutual funds on lagged one-year returns and estimated performance based on the resulting portfolios, thus replicating the methodology of Hendricks, Patel, and Zach Houser. In table three, the portfolios of mutual fund returns were sorted on one-year past returns demonstrating strong variation in mean returns. The post-formation monthly excess returns on desktop portfolios decreased monotonically in portfolio rank. Cross-sectional variation in return is considerably larger among the previous year's worst performing funds than the previous year's best funds. The CAPM doesn't explain the relative returns on the portfolios. Instead, the CAPM alpha is reproduced as much dispersion as simple returns. In contrast to the CAPM, the four-factor model explained much of the spread and pattern in these portfolios. The sensitivities to the size and momentum factors accounting for most of the explanation. The author also performed the Spearman non-parametric test. The null hypothesis is that the performance measures are randomly ordered. The Spearman test falls in the 5.7 percentile fractile. And turning your attention to Table 4, characteristics of the portfolio of mutual funds formed on lagged one-year returns. Mutual fund managers claim that expenses and turnover do not reduce performance. The average portfolio characteristics reported in Table 4 indicated expenses and turnover, which are related to the performance. Decile 10 particularly stood out with higher than average expenses. It does not appear that fund age size or load fees can explain the large spread in performance on these portfolios. The differences in the portfolio turnover do not explain a portion of the remaining portfolio 9-10 spread in alphas. Thus, expense ratios and turnover alone cannot explain the anomalous negative abnormal performance by the worst return decile of funds. Mutual funds are sorted annually from 1963 to 1993 into equal weight decile portfolios based on lagged one-year return. Funds with the highest past one-year return comprise decile 1. Funds with the lowest comprise decile 10. Now, Table 5. Just as in... Fama and Macbeth, 1973, the author estimated the cross-sectional relation each month and then averaged the coefficient across the complete sample period. This yielded 330 cross-sectional regressions, which averaged 350 observations uh, for a combined sample of about 116,000 observations. In order to mitigate any bias, the author estimated the one-month alpha each month of the fund and then estimated the cross-selection a cross-section relation of the equation using the Fama Macbeth estimator. The results in Table 5 indicated a strong relation between performance and size, expense ratios, turnover, and load fees. The results uh, relation between performance and expense ratios and modified turnover suggests that mutual funds do not recoup their investment costs. The turnover coefficient can be interpreted as a measure of the net cost of trading as it reveals the marginal performance effect of small change in turnover. With respect to Table 6, Table 6 portfolios of mutual funds formed on three-year past four-factor model alphas. The author evaluated performance relative to the four-factor model and sorted out mutual funds on alphas from the same model. However, using the same asset pricing model to sort and estimate performance also picked up model bias between ranking and formation periods. Similar problems exist if there is an omitted fa factor in the model and do the joint hypothesis problem. The author was unable to directly test model bias. Table 6 reports the statistics on decile portfolios formed on a lag three-year alpha estimates from the four-factor model. The sorting on the four-factor model does not achieve as large in spread and mean return as one-year past returns, but it does identify firms with larger positive and negative abnormal performance relative to the four-factor model. And so that concludes this video. I hope you all found it helpful, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.